G'day guys, how's it going? It's Gary from Compsci Guy IT. Um, in this video, I'm just going to be going over setting up our environment and creating the static meshes from the brushes that we'll be using um, when it comes to building things like structures and whatnot in our map. Now, I'm not going to be covering anything to do with uh, the bomb, the switch, or visual script or anything like that. So if you don't think you're going to find this uh, video too relevant, you can go ahead and skip to the next one where we'll be getting into creating the more functional objects for our scene. But if you just want to follow along, um, I'll be going through how I set up everything to begin with. So straight away, what I did was um, I went to lights and I decided to drag in a directional light. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this straight away because we're in unlit mode and we'll be able to see everything, but I just figured just get it out of the way straight away. And what I want to do though is put it in a place where it's not going to get in the way. So I'll go over to our details panel under transform, the location, the Z value I'm going to put at negative 100. That's going to put it below where we're going to be working. So because it's a directional light, its um, source is going to come from a place in infinity. So it doesn't really matter where in our scene we decide to put it. The next thing I'll do is I'll go up to our modes panel, the BSP, bring in a box brush, pop it in there, and I'm going to change the dimensions of it around. I'm just going to create our ground, so over in details, brush settings, the X value I'm going to make 10,000, Y value I'm going to make 10,000 as well, and the Z value I'm just going to make 10. Don't really need it to be um, too big. So um, I'm going to move back over here, and I'm going to place a um, a player start right there. So now, if I press play, here we are running around on the ground. That's awesome. Now I'm, I want to change a few things up a bit. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the directional light and it's, I found I find that was a bit bright and what I want for this particular scene is uh, I want it to be uh, kind of dimly lit, pretty much like it, very similar to what we're seeing here in unlit mode. But if we choose lit mode, you'll notice it's much brighter. Now because the reason why I want to change it up is because uh, we're going to be having explosions and I really want the actual explosions, the light to to, I don't know, to pop a bit more. So to do that, I'm going to bring the intensity down. If we go to the details panel under light, we'll see a value for intensity is set to 10. I'm going to put that at 0.1. So now it's kind of nice and dimly lit here. We can still see what's going on, so that's perfect for what I want. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to place a material on top of this surface here. So I'll just go into our starter content under materials, I'm just going to choose something. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going to go with the grass, I think. So now that we've placed that there, um, you'll notice that it's only on one particular facing. Uh, when it comes to brushes, when you apply materials to them, they only get applied to one particular face. If you wanted to apply to every single surface, um, you're basically just going to have to drag and drop onto every single surface. There, there are a few little workarounds and I'll show you one very shortly as well. Um, but for now this is all I need. We're only going to be seeing the top part so this is just fine. Um, and, oh, one thing I want to do though is I'll select player start and our box brush. I want to actually position everything so it's dead center. Um, and so we'll go into our top view and you'll notice that the green and red lines that interconnect here they are um, I want to actually place the center of our map or our ground um, dead center right here so I'll drag this along zoom right in on it and move it to there and because we've selected both the player start as well as the box brush, everything should have moved with it. 
So I should have probably done that from the very beginning. That's okay. Might do. I'll move this as well. Place that dead center. There we go. That's good. Back to perspective. Um, press F to come back to our player start. Okay. Now, because we've got a box brush, if we play, we're going to run on it fine. But as we start to uh, create more structures and things like that in our map, um, the box brushes are going to, or whatever brush that you choose to use, um, they're going to start to pile up. And when they do, they're going to get performance heavy. So the way to get around that is to transform them from brushes to static meshes. So the way to do that is we select the select our box brush and we go over to our details panel and where it says in um, under brush settings I have an option to create static mesh if you don't see it, it might be because you have this section closed just click on that triangle that says show advanced and you'll be able to create static mesh it will ask you where you want to store it so I've got a folder here called assets I'm just going to highlight that and change the name to something that's a little bit more appropriate. Um, SM prefix for static mesh. It's always good to prefix all of your assets um, just for organization purposes. And I'm just going to call it ground. There we go. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that we've got invalid light map settings. Um, the reason for that is we go to we select our, what's now our static mesh and go to our details panel just move it up here a little bit under lighting we have the option of um, overridden light map resolution if we check that it's going to go um, all that's going to go away and everything will look as it should the thing is though if we press play now watch what happens our character falls straight through our static mesh and this is because there's no collisions attached to it so I'll just go back up to the top and I'm going to select our static mesh and oh what a okay ah, one thing I forgot to do I'll select our direction our player start when I centered everything from the top view. What I've neglected to do was center everything from the side view as well, the front view. So everything is above that green line. So I want to fix that. Just drag, drag it there. There we go. It's, it's just the way I prefer to work. So back to perspective. Start F. Okay back in business. Um, now, creating a collision for our static mesh, because it's a, it's a, just a very basic shape, it's like a box shape, we didn't really alter um, the actual shape of the box, just the dimensions of it. Creating a collision is going to, for this is going to be pretty easy. Uh, the way we do it is if we go up to our scene outliner, just right click on our mesh, choose edit um, SM ground, and we're in the editor for our static mesh. If we go up the top and choose collision, we're going to have a bunch of different options here. You can go ahead and like check out what they do. Basically, um, it's, it looks pretty self-explanatory, but um, these ones here we have 10 DOP, um, 18 DOP, etc. Uh, they're basically creating um, more collision surfaces, basically giving um, beveled edges to the corners and all that sort of thing. So they're basically just the same as the box collision, very similar anyway. Um, so I'm just going to actually choose box simplified collision because that's all we need for this. And just take a look at the, the, the edge of the horizon over there and watch what happens when I click this. You'll notice that there's a slightly, there's a very slight green line. If I come out to the end, uh, You'll notice on all the edges here we've got this green line and this is basically showing us that the collision has been applied so we can go ahead and click save and if 
can go back to our map and press play, it's going to behave just like the brush did. This is exactly what we want. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is create the stage. Now, the way I did this is just by bringing in more uh, brushes. So I'll bring in another box brush, drag it in, and I'll let go. And you'll notice that straight away, this is um, it's got the material that we use for our ground applied to every single surface or every single face of the brush. This might not be desirable. I do in fact want to put a different material on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this now. I'll go into our materials and what I might do is I'll choose glass. No. I might choose marble. Marble looks good. So I'll apply it. And like I said earlier, it's only going to apply it to one single side. But the way to get around this is if I just select it and delete, just get rid of it, and drag in another one. Now we're going to have uh, a box brush with the material applied to every single side. So I'll just place that right there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, transform... Um, the X and Y's and whatnot to something a bit larger. Right to there, right to there. And all I'm really going to be doing now is um, creating uh, some additive and subtractive brushes. So I'll just get get us started. So that looks about right. And to create another one, I'll just hold down L, I'll drag it up. there so it's created a second second brush just by doing that so I'll just uh, uh, get that back um, get that back here get that down and I don't know exactly how how deep I'm going into it so I'm going to have to bring in something else but um, these are both additive brushes if I go over to our details panel under brush types, select subtractive, suddenly we've got this whole section that's taken away from the additive brush. Now I want to get an idea of how high this is. I think it might be actually too high, but if I bring in a character, our hero here, place it right there, you get an idea of how high that is. That actually isn't too bad. Yeah, I might actually leave it that high. I just brought in this so I can get an idea of the actual dimensions and everything um, rather than have to try and guess it and adjust it later. So I'll just get rid of him, that's fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to keep creating um, more and more subtractive brushes and start chipping away at this stage. Um, I won't, you know, bore you through the whole process. I'm just going to speed through this, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm just going to hit Alt um, and create a new one and a new one and a new one. So. Okay, so here we are. If I press play now, we've got a stage with stairs that we can run up. And that's great, that's, that works just fine. Um, now to create a static mesh out of all of these, I'm going to have to select every single brush that we created. So just sort of like select the bottommost one and shift and click the topmost one. And we do it just like we did before, create static mesh. Choose the folder, create the name, sm underscore stage. And just like before, check the box, the lighting there. And just like before, if we press play, now we need to create the collisions for it. The thing is though, 
we select our stage and go into or right click and go into the editor for it um, we've got a stage here with no collisions if we click the same collision as we did last time it's going to create a collision that completely encapsulates the whole thing and the truth is if we go back and press play we'll see what effect that has we can't actually move in on it so the truth is you can try every single one of them but you're not going to find one that works well so I'm just going to delete select a collision and just get out of here because it um, you don't need to be in there anymore what we're going to have to do because this is a more complex structure that we've got we have to create collisions out of our volume so we've got blocking volumes here drag this in and we're going to have to basically go through the process of creating blocking volumes at every single part of the stage where we want collisions attached to so I am going to go ahead and do that now just like before I'm just going to speed through this so you don't have to actually sit through it And there we have it, there's our finished um, static mesh with all the uh, collisions applied to them basically. So if I press play, and we run up on our stage and we're colliding with it as if um, it is an actual solid object now, so that's great. The thing is though, let's give ourselves more room here and I'll select the stage. If I move the stage, going to find that all the collisions or the blocking volumes that we've applied to it aren't going to move with it so that's a problem if we want to move it around so the way around this and you'll also notice that we've got all these blocking volumes um, cluttering up our sand outliner we can actually eliminate all of these or well, not exactly eliminate them but um, we can make it neater if we select all of them drag them over our stage static mesh and you'll notice now that there are now all those blocking volumes are the children of the stage so we can make them all disappear if we click this little triangle here make them reappear as well now this makes things a little bit better as far as organization goes um, but now if we select the stage and we move the stage around all the blocking volumes will move with it so that's that's perfect that's good that's what we want Okay, good. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, basically, this is um, one way of creating static meshes within the within the engine um, and creating collisions for them. I do not know of a, a, a simpler way or a quicker way of getting this done. Um, if you have more knowledge than me on this subject please let me know in the comments because it is a little bit time consuming um, but at the end of the day you're going to want to use a 3d modeling program of some sort and create the actual collisions within them and this will get rid of all of the the collision all the all of the clutter that we've got in our scene outliner at the moment but as you can see we can minimize that as much as possible uh, I hope you enjoyed the video I hope, you, I hope you got something out of it and um, we'll be getting into much more interesting stuff as we go along in these, um, these tutorials. So um, stay tuned, I'll see you in the next video.